Hello, this is Michael O'Grady and uh, we're looking at Flash again, this time looking at movie clips, the third and most complex symbol in the group of three. In the library I've already created a graphic symbol called Button Base and uh, it's just a rounded cornered rectangle. So now I'm going to make a movie clip. I'm going to make the movie clip called Clip and I'm going to uh, make it um, using button base. Okay, so make sure that's the movie clip. And I'm going to drag button base in there. You'll notice that I've got the registration point, I'm in the editing mode of clip from the library, and it has a timeline unlike buttons which has the up, over, down, hit state. Uh, and as many layers as I, as I want, I'll just call this one background. Okay, so in this first frame I'm going to drag button base into here. We're not going to size it, uh, sorry, position it. We'll see the problems that are incurred in, uh, later in here. So, <clears throat> I'm going back to the scene and I'm dragging on a copy of the graphic and the movie clip. And we're going to have a look at the properties because we can do something to movie clips that we can't do with graphics. So. With a graphic, what it sees as a graphic, we can change its size, width, uh, the colour effect, change the tint, etc. Um, the looping, well, it's a graphic, so it doesn't actually loop. There's no timeline inside it. The movie clip, we've got some different things. First of all, we can give it a name through the code. It says it's a movie clip. And the width and height and position, etc. We've got some 3D possibilities with it now to rotate it. We've got our colour, as usual. <coughs> and uh, we've got display and filters. With display, we can go to multiply, light and darken. These are the Photoshop type um, uh, blend modes. And in filters, we can add a filter, drop shadows, blurs, glows, levels, gradient, glows, etc. So there's quite a few there. You can't do this with graphics. You can do it with buttons, but movie clips are the main ones. So if we just add uh, a filter here, so this is a drop shadow, we can affect the size of the shadow in the X and Y. You see the linked, if we click on the anchor, it will change. We can change the uh, strength of it, if you like, uh, read transparency, the quality. Uh, the angle from which the virtual sun is coming from and the distance that um, the, the object is off the page virtually. <clears throat> so we do knock out, some of these um, are, are quite good for um, inner glows and things like that where you want the object to disappear. Um, the colour of the shadow we can change as well. So we still get the purple but a, a green overlay on top of that. Okay, so let's put this back to something like... Okay. So let's just get rid of that and now what we're going to do is make um, a button with the movie clip in it. Okay, but let's, so let's have a look at the movie clip. The movie clip is used to add some animation. So we'd actually tween over a certain amount of frames. Let's say 30 in this case. So I insert a keyframe. Now, inserting a keyframe means I'm going to do a classic tween. And if we create a motion tween, then I've already contradicted what I'm doing here. Okay, so. I'm going to have to delete that frame at the end, but I'll just go in the motion editor and show you how, my, how you might make the mistake and then rectify the, uh, the problems. So in the motion editor, what I want is the um, X scale and Y scale, and I'm going to increase the size of this to about a quarter, 125% uh, over 15 frames, and then uh, bring it back down. And you can see um, it goes up to 125% at frame 15 and then stays at that and we've got a keyframe at the end. So obviously this keyframe is, um, is in re not required um, in the motion editor anyway. And so we've got to go back to frame, I've deleted frame 30, so back to frame 29 and make sure we're there at the end. And then come back to the 
scale, x and y scale. Uh, you move one, you move both, unless you click on the little uh, chain. And so now we should expand to 25% and then come back down again. So this is a seamless loop. And when we put this on the movie, um, we're um, OK. So let's just get rid of that animation and make a new layer. And we'll make this from scratch using the classic tween instead of the motion tween. We need a keyframe at the end, so I'll just insert a keyframe there. We get the nice straight line arrow. And in the center, uh, frame 15, I'll just right click, insert a keyframe. And then I can either go to the free transform tool over here and drag this out. You'll see as I can uh, rearrange the proportions by moving the mouse. If I press shift, it restrains the proportions, but I just drag them out as I want. If I want to transform um, to a particular uh, size, uh, that was scale, let's, that didn't do it. Let's just go back, um, scale and rotate is the one where that's it. Scale and rotate, we'll just put in there 110%, a 10% increase this time. So we'll just get a, a, a small amount of uh, enlargement and then back again. So if you line these clips up, I'll just put four on stage and then drag around them, align uh, the left and space them out and then run the movie, control and enter. You can see these movie clips are all throbbing, they're all vibrating, they're doing their thing. Okay, So they'll do them endlessly um, until the movie's stopped. So I can add some drop shadows on one. I can select another. Let's just see what they look like. Whoops. Uh, go to a blur. Uh, I can add uh, a blur here. I can deselect that to make zero blur on the Y. So we've just got uh, blur on the X, like a, a motion blur. Uh, the third one down, I'll have a glow. Uh, let's go for... A red but we'll make it a larger distance. These are now unlinked. And then the last one, let's go for a bevel. And then we can control the size, the bevel, etc. So you can see that we've got uh, different treatments and these are just filters. And we can apply filters to buttons and movie clips but not graphics. Okay, So let's get rid of those and now make our button. What we want to do is make a button, the one that's missing here, the third, uh, sorry, the second most complex one. I'm going to make it from the button base. Uh, we'll just call it button. I'll make sure the type is button. And we we'll see we've got our up, over, down and hit state. So grab button base, bring it in over here. You'll notice I'm just dragging it. I'm going to have to go back and place these specifically. Uh, in the overstate, I'm right-clicking and inserting a keyframe. That's where my movie clip is going to go in a minute. And then I'm just going to uh, insert a keyframe in the down, drop it down three pixels and to the right. <coughs> so in the over, what I want to do is uh, select the object on stage and then swap it with an instance of the movie clip. So I'm swapping the static graphic for the movie clip. But you'll notice that the behavior up there was still graphic. <laughs> so let's bring some versions of button onto stage and run that, see what happens. Okay, so we've got a problem where it's moving down to the left. Now this is because the movie clip that we put on there it's, it's animated. So why isn't it working? Well, when you swap objects, you've got to do two things. One is swap them, and the other thing is to make sure that the behavior of the swapped item coming in is set to the correct behavior. So what we need to do is go back to the button, go to the overstate and select the movie clip there. 
go back to its properties and whilst we've swapped it for the movie clip, so that's okay, we need to make sure it behaves as a graphic. Okay, so it's an instance of clip one, we just need to behave as a movie clip. <coughs> so that should now work. Now as we roll over you'll notice it still jumps to the left a little bit and this is because I haven't organized the position of the graphics and the buttons, the movie clips inside each other. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is go through each one and set them all to zero zero. Make sure that all the positions are set to where I want them to be. So if I go to the window drop down and go to info and just drag info into the align area here and just drag it back down and lock it. There we go. <coughs> so drag around this object now and make sure the X and Y is at zero zero. Okay, so just double click and then zero, then tab zero, then tab again. In the clip, I want to go to each frame. Obviously, I should have done this originally. Okay, so in each frame, make sure these are all at zero, zero. And then the last frame. And I need to do the same in the button now with the graphic on the up, which it was, uh, with the movie clip here, zero, zero. And the down should be at uh, three, three, but uh, it's not quite. So we could zero, zero it, and then I'll just click it, drop it down three. Or alternatively, I should have put in three and three. So now when we run the movie, it works as we would expect. So that's it, we've got an animated button, there's no text on it, but uh, that's relatively easy to do. So just as a reminder then, a movie clip, if we just go into and edit it, it's basically a mini flash movie, and a small encapsulated flash movie, animation, shape tween, motion tween, lots of layers, anything you want. Okay, And you can drag on as many copies as you want. Thank you for watching.